All right, welcome everybody. Today uh, we're pretty much in the last week of school. Um, we're going to talk today about evaluating uh, the media sources and uh, maybe get into some conspiracy theories and how to evaluate that. So today's lecture is really a accumulation of everything that we've kind of talked about in this semester. One of the big challenges we have in life, you know, it's who cares about academia, right? Who cares about your grade? What really matters in life is that people are going to be coming at you with different stories and different ideas, and you need to evaluate them. You need to say, hmm, yeah, that sounds right to me, and, and, and be right about it when you say that. Or, hmm, that sounds like BS to me, and be right when you say that too. And, you know, maybe your first guess is wrong, but you spend the time to sort of dig in and investigate it and find out if it's right or not. Okay. This is in terms of like habits of life for like success in life. It's probably one of the biggest things. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are directly trying to scam you, you know, like that's, that's just a thing, you know, like, uh, people will contact you and say, Hey, you know, um, I'm somebody who uh, was at the store yesterday. You walked off without paying for something. Uh, give me your credit card number, and I'll charge you the thirty bucks for the item that you you walked off with. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And, you know, you, you you didn't pay the credit card processing fee. Here, give me your credit card now. There's so many scams out there, you know, and that's that's part of it, right? Scams are scams are an important part of it. Um, if you go to work for a company. Uh, people will try doing phishing attacks on you. I get phishing attacks on my work email addresses semi-regularly. Hi, this is Laurie Bennett, the president of Clovis Community College. Hey, I'm at a, I'm at a meeting right now and I'm, I'm away from my wallet. Could you, uh, you know, I, I need to give a gift to uh, one of the people here at the conference. Can you send me a $100 Apple gift card and uh, I'll, I'll pay you back when I get back from the conference? Like... <laughs> If you're going to talk about your car's extended warranty. Yeah, um, people will call you up on the phone. Hey, this is the uh, IRS. Um, you know, there's a problem with your, uh, there's a problem with your taxes. Oh my gosh, what? Well, yeah, you underpaid last year, so you're going to go to jail right now unless you um, run a credit card for $1,000. You know, it's a unfortunately common thing in our society right and a lot of people fall for those scams um uh, but that's that's only actually a small part of what i'm talking about today okay so what we want as a critical thinker is to believe true things and to not believe false things right and so this includes things like reading media stories that aren't real <laughs> you know uh, conspiracy theories urban legends uh, scams, uh, whole political philosophies, right? There's just, it's a world of ideas out there and you need to be able to sort out which ones are right, and which ones are wrong. And, uh, and you also need to mute your cell phone. There we go. So we'll start with media stories. That's kind of a, a well-established territory. So, uh, here is Google news. Um, fact sheet the President Biden and Pre Vice President Harris reduce high speed internet costs for millions of Americans okay so there's there's a headline so uh, I have not seen this before I just pulled up Google News a second ago what is the source of this headline people on chat what do you see We have a claim here. The claim is that uh, Biden and Harris have reduced the cost of high-speed internet for millions of Americans, and it is a fact. In fact, there's so many facts, it is a fact sheet. What's the source of this claim? The White House. Yeah. Now, is the White House going to be a biased or an unbiased source for this claim? Yeah, like, 
they're gonna always put what they do in a good light you know that's it's what what you do you know so fact sheet okay statements and release so this is a press release from uh the white house so they have okay so they have not okay they have secured commitments from 20 internet providers to cut prices to increase speeds okay um so they have not in fact reduced the cost of high speed internet for millions of americans they've received promises to reduce the price of high speed internet okay and telecom community uh, companies have have promised that before uh, i can go on a whole rant about about that thing um based both and i that's funny high speed internet's no longer a luxury it's a necessity okay um too many families go without high-speed internet because of the cost or have to cut back on essentials to make their monthly internet service payments, lowering prices, including the cost of high-speed internet service is Biden's type of priority. Today, President Biden and Vice President Harris are announcing they've secured private sector commitments that will lower high-speed internet costs for millions of American families. Okay. So what we have here is a bit of a um, um, standard political speech, right? Too many Americans drive without seatbelts, you know. This is actually one of those um, great um, phrases that politicians like using. Uh, there's no actual numbers there, right? Like, is this too many? Well, how many is too many? I don't know. It's too many, right? And, and that's something that nobody can really disagree with because, you know, whatever number you think is <laughs> too many is, is kind of up to you, you know. So you can't really disagree with it because... Their definition of too many is probably different from yours, you know? So, uh, that's, I, I love reading political speeches because, um, I just love seeing those rhetorical tricks used. You know, I don't like eating food that is too spicy and everyone goes, yeah, I don't like eating food that's too spicy too. And it works because each person has a different, um, threshold for how spicy is too spicy. And so... Everyone goes, yeah, 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 I'm on board with this guy. He speaks the truth, man. Whereas, you know, if you said, I don't like spicy food, then, you know, half the audience that likes spicy food would be like, boo, who doesn't like spicy food? You know, but if you say, I don't like food that's too spicy, that's how a politician talks, right? Because then everyone's like, yeah, I'm on board with you, man. He speaks my language. I don't like food that's too spicy, too. And, you know, one person's calibrated up here and one person's calibrated down here. So... Okay, as part of the bipartisan bipartisan infrastructure law, the president and vice president worked with Democrats and Republicans to create the ACAP, or no, the ACP, not the ACA. Uh, the ACA is the Affordable Care Act. This is the Affordable Connectivity Program. Okay, I guess they didn't want to use um, ACT because then it would conflict with uh, the Obamacare right, thing, right? Which allows tens of millions of Americans to reduce their internet services by 30 month or 75 month on tribal lands to ensure the most efficient use of these public dollars and deliver maximum cost savings. They have secured commitments from 20 leading internet providers covering more than 80% of the U.S. population across urban, suburban, and rural areas to either increase speeds or cut prices. Making sure they all offer ACP eligible households high speed, high quality internet plans for no more than $30 a month. So what has that actually told us? So let's pick this. Let's pick this apart. Um, what has actually happened? They got a they got a commitment, okay. But what what is the commitment actually to? dead silence on discord you don't see you don't see the way out for the uh, internet service providers this is a great document by the way I like this a lot here let me zoom in for you what do you see what's the loophole 
do we learn about logical disjunctions? This statement is true if you either increase your speeds or you cut prices. All right? So what's the loophole? I'm trying to teach you guys how to read critically. Yeah. This or that. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you're paying more for faster internet either way, yeah. And so basically, this or that, right? But what's what's the loophole for ISPs? Take a little bit of pity on you. Do internet service providers increase speed over time anyway? They do, <laughs> right? Um, the the you know if you're talking about cable modems, uh, we're on to Doxis 3.1 right now. Doxis 4.0 is going to be coming out in the next couple of years, I think, three years maybe, for Doxis 4.0 which will allow you to have 10 gigabit Ethernet out of your cable modem. Um, at t is installing fiber. All of these things are ways of increasing speed, and they don't have to make any commitment at all to lowering prices or giving affordable Internet. They just keep doing what they're doing, and then they get to look like the good guy. So maybe that's not the case, but based on what we have here, um, this could mean absolutely nothing. And... What does it take to be an ACP eligible household? Done. Let's find out. Okay, so from large providers like at t Comcast, and Verizon serving dozens of states to smaller providers serving rural areas like Jackson Energy Authority. And this, is a, this is more political speech, right? Uh, politicians love these kinds of paragraphs. The commitments will allow tens of millions of ACP eligible households to receive high-speed internet at no cost. Okay, that's different. Because they said uh, no more than 30 months, now it's no cost. Okay. All right. The Biden-Harris administration is also launching a comprehensive effort to, to make sure as many ACP-eligible households as possible to mention the program by launching getinternet.gov. Okay. A simple, easy-to-use website with information on how you can sign up for it and participating internet providers. Let's find this out. Get internet. <laughs> All right. Find out if you qualify. All right, household size. All right, so yeah, that's cool. They have special benefits here if you're in Alaska or Hawaii. All right, uh, you participate in SNAP, Medicaid, Sci, Produce Lunch, Pillar Rant. Might be relevant to you guys. Lifeline, uh, I think that's the phone service, travel assistance. All right, so do, 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 through household income. What's my household size? Three. What state? California. Yes, apply now. All right, let's see. Let's see who we can get discount internet from. My name is. Long Johnson. I was born on January first, nineteen. A one. Ah, you have to scan it. Ah, I'm not gonna go that far. Okay. It's just curious to see if anyone was actually participating in our area. <laughs> you guys get the reference on that one? The cat. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. so if you do that, okay. Partnering cities and states, collaborating with public interest organizations. Okay. All right. <clears throat> New grant programs for tens of billions of dollars for broadband. Yeah, that's been a like the Rust grants and things like that. Let's see here. Coronavirus, coronavirus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, these have been a, a giant source of just graft and corruption over the years, by the way. They, they just hand billions of dollars to people. Like, yeah, sure, we'll install high-speed internet. Sure. <laughs> and then they don't. Right? Um, new rules.
tools will soon require providers to display a broadband nutrition level that will make it easier to comparison shop for the best deal on the internet. There's only like two internet providers. I don't know. What? Let's take a look at that. All right. Uh, news release. So labels, compare. Speed, data allowance, network management practices, and other critical broadband service information. There, I guess that's fairly straightforward. Uh, Adopted rules to ban sweetheart deals between ISPs and landlords, restrict the internet. Yeah, it's probably a good thing too. Uh, competition agenda is focused on providing Americans with more good options for internet service. That'd be nice if that happens. Uh, ECP, 48 million households. 40% of households in the country qualify for it. Uh, discount, see, there's a difference between free and having a discount, <laughs> right? That's <laughs> not the same thing. 30 bucks, a, 30 bucks a, a month off does not necessarily mean free. Okay. More than 1,300 ISPs participate in the program. More than 11 million have signed up to receive the ACP benefit. Um, either reduce prices or raise speeds. Again, you can see that, okay. Yeah. They, they just incrementally increase speeds anyway, right? So... Um, so, yeah. Uh, sufficiently high speed plan that offers download speeds of at least 100 megabits a second everywhere, though the provider's infrastructure is capable of it. That's actually pretty reasonable, I would say. 100 megabits a second is not bad. No fees and no data caps is also nice. Like that. As far as this initiative, they lower the price of its FIOS from 40 bucks a month to 30 a month. No. So there's a yeah, ten bucks off. Okay. That's not a discount of thirty dollars. That's not thirty bucks off, that's a discount of ten bucks, but discount oh yeah. <laughs> Do you see where the uh, the weasel word is in there? Up to. Yeah. A dollar off is technically a discount of up to thirty bucks a month. Yeah. That one, that one got me yeah, up to 30 bucks a month. So it could be a buck. It could be a penny. Oh. <laughs> so they're knocking 10 bucks off a month. Cool. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. So, yeah, you, you don't have to be super, like, sarcastic and doubtful when reading things, but you should always... Like, look at it, because, like, you know, they're promising, they they said several times, like, free internet, you know, what I thought was $30 a month off, and the reality is there's a slight discount for people that are low income. Cool. And whether or not they would have done that without the White House, I don't know, maybe, who knows. Um, endemic. Airbnb CEO, the office is anachronistic and from a pre-digital age. I tried a viral Diet Coke and Kramer drink famous in Utah. So, uh, I like how fact sheet is capitalized. Yeah, that wasn't like a fact sheet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is a fact sheet anyway? It's a fact sheet. Like, 10 facts on aging and health. Right, that's a fact sheet. It's just a bunch of facts. You know, that thing kind of read like a press release to me. I don't know. Uh, how, okay. So we've talked a little bit about clickbait before, right? Which is when they, they tease something, but they don't tell you in the headline. So it makes you like want to click on it, right? So like, how the January 6th panel broke through Trump allies stonewalling. Well, how? How do they do it? You know, uh, they move closer to. Okay, so you haven't done anything yet, All right? Uh, see, this is this is an actual like headline. 
Fire at Wisconsin anti-abortion office investigated as arson. There you go. There, that tells you what you need to know. <clears throat> this, I tried a viral Diet Coke and Cranberry drink famous in Utah. Are there more than one? Like, I want to, you know, that's, that's kind of clickbaity. Here's what the White House's grim coronavirus warning means for you. Clip 8. Thank you, CNN. Uh, Airbnb CEO, the office is anachronistic and for pre digital age. I would say that's actually not clickbait, simply because they've kind of told you what his thesis statement is, right? That presumably he's going to encourage working from home, you know, permanently. Let's see if this pans out. Uh, clickbait, like I... I just won't click on clickbait headlines in general. Is COVID endemic? What experts say? This is a good headline. Dictator's son far ahead in Philippine presidential vote. Uh, although that's, you know, um, you know, obviously a little bit biased probably. Well, Roe v. Wade overturned mothers to be hard hit if abortion law changes. Yeah, again, not really clickbait. Like, it's kind of telling you its thesis statement, you know. Um, yeah, there you go. So work from home forever on that one. Um, Eric Holder says DOJ should indict Trump over January 6th. There you go. Again, not clickbait. Like, here's the thesis statement. Okay. Um, looking for a job in Fresno? There's a pizzeria hiring. Well... How is that headline news? <laughs> Are pizza places ever not hiring? <laughs> like, I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> out, of, out of all the jobs in Fresno, it could have been like, you know, get a job working for, you know, the city government doing, you know, IT work. No, it's, this pizzeria is hiring, you know, get come get a job. Like, how desperate do you have to be? I don't know. A man being shot in Fresno. The B's recommendation for Fresno City Council District 1. Obviously, opinion. Yeah. And so that's marked as opinion, which is good. Right? Like, I don't, I don't have any issue with opinion pieces. What, what bugs me is when news organizations run opinion pieces as news. Right? So. Uh, Bitcoin falls to the month low. Elon Musk says he may die under mysterious circumstances in a cryptic tweet. Uh, right. Arc Intel's first is created GPU. Let's take a look at this. Let's, let's evaluate this one. So, who's the source of this? Is this a video review? Not a video review, at least not part of it. Okay, so what is, uh, yeah, that video symbol, like I usually avoid it. What's the source of this this uh, argument, this uh, article here? Isn't it like every fast food place hiring? Yeah, like my Starbucks is closed down multiple times because they didn't have enough people to staff Starbucks, right? And Taco Bell closed down because they didn't, like how, how that made front page news is beyond me, but okay. <laughs> PC World, yeah, okay. So is PC World a credible credible source or not? That's usually a good place to start with is who's the source of a news article. When you're when you're evaluating a news story, who's the source? Last time it was the White House. And so you know the White House is not gonna release something critical of Biden and Harris, right? Like that's just it's the White House, it's gonna be it's gonna be biased, you know, and you just you just work with it, you know. You just work with it. it just because something's biased doesn't mean that it's wrong. You know, like Kobe Bryant's mom probably thought Kobe Bryant was the best uh, basketball player in the world because she was his mom and, you know, not necessarily wrong, you know? Like, you can be both biased and right. And and some critical thinking professors would be like, you shouldn't read biased sources. And it's like, eh, I mean, what, <laughs> what are, you're just not going to read the White House's press release? I mean, like, you got to you gotta deal with it. But my, my advice is to read biases in both directions or three directions or four directions, you know, because there's always two sides to a story and oftentimes more than two sides to a story. Yeah. So, um, so let's take a look at this. Um, see them sometimes with product reviews. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here we go. T 
tested Arc A370M, their first discrete GPU to seriously battle NVIDIA and AMD. So first of all, a discrete GPU is one that's very quiet right now. That's, <laughs> that's discrete with two E's in a row, <laughs> not discrete ETE. Um, so a graphics card, right? Like you can have in like a either a, a laptop, which are usually stripped down smaller uh, graphics cards, or um, you know, you can have like a big monstrous monstrosity of a graphics card. It's an entry level, okay? So it's going to be cheap, and it's challenging the 3050, which is the low-end NVIDIA card. So um, it's finally happening. Great, softly their PC world. <laughs> it's finally happening. So uh, when you when you study news stories, um, there are these things called the lead. The lead is what leads off the story. And you can have something called a hard lead, or you can have something called a soft lead. A hard lead basically is like, here's the facts. Intel has finally released a discrete GPU. It does 20% slower than a NVIDIA 3050. It's going to be available next week. That's a hard lead. Like, here are the facts. Um, a soft lead is something like, it's finally happening. Uh, okay, all right, cool. So, after several years of teases, links, hits, and one extremely soft desktop, they're finally coming out. How well do they perform? To find out, I paid a... Okay, all right, all right. You paid a visit. Bottom line, it... Okay, great. So, let's... Usually when I when I read news stories reviewing these kinds of things, um, I just start looking at the benchmarks first, honestly. Because that, you know, it, it's quite impressive. Is it? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so 3D Mark Time Spy. Okay, so it's faster than a 3050, slower than a 3050 Ti, and about half the speed of a 3060, which I would consider like a loan card. So, eh. Okay. And it's twice as fast as their old one, so good job, I guess. I don't know. Um, so about the same, no, slower than a 3050, half the speed, less than half the speed of a 3060. Okay. Faster than a 3050 here, again, way slower than a 3060. 19 frames a second at 1080p. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So that's, that's kind of how I read tech reviews. I, I basically just pull up the benchmarks and look at it. Um, 3060, yeah, it's, you got a 3060, a 3070, a 3080, and a 3090, right? Like, so, 3060 to me is, like, kind of entry level. Um, let's surprise someone with these days, okay? And you get the TI versions, yeah, and stuff like that, sure. Uh, why are you doing this? Okay, 3060. Okay, maybe not that entry level. It's 500 bucks. Prices are crazy. Even at 3050s, way overpriced still, in my opinion. I thought they were going down too. Yeah, what is what is the MSRP? 3060. Supposed to be 320 dollars. Yeah, that's that's more reasonable. And a 3050 is supposed to be 250. Yeah. All right. So A370M. <laughs> They're selling for 1400 dollars. Yeah. Yeah. There's no low end shifts with. No one press with that. Okay, so here's a uh, here's a uh, website from some random community college that I found that uh, that takes you through the steps of analyzing a news article. Right. So is it news? Is it opinion? Right. Uh, so things in this column are in favor of credibility. Things in this column are not in favor of credibility. So editorial or opinion piece. And I, I don't I don't know if I would 
necessarily say it's not credible if something's an opinion piece, right? Because, you know, the, the, the White House, like, when, credible is the wrong word here for this website. Because credible means you shouldn't believe it or it's not telling the truth, right? When you do an opinion piece, especially like that White House, you know, press release we saw, it's not likely they're directly lying about that, right? Like there, there, there probably was a commitment from Verizon to lower the price of one of their plans from 40 bucks to 30 bucks. Probably not a lie. They might've been do, trying to do it anyway. Like it, it doesn't matter, but that, that fact there is probably not a lie. What you have to understand with an opinion piece is that they're only going to present a biased one-sided opinion, right? Uh, from the White House, it's going to be Democrats are good, Republicans are bad, everything Biden and Harris do is great, everything the other side does is terrible, and and you just have to like kind of understand that, right? Like, you, you know, it's not that it's not credible, it's just they're going to be selecting the facts, they're going to be cherry-picking the facts that make them look good, and then there you go. And in the places where it doesn't look good, they'll use an or, you know, or an up to $30 off, up to $30 off, you know, and they'll kind of use weasel words to... So they're not lying, you know. It was 10 bucks off instead of 30. They didn't lie about it. They just, yeah, used weasel words. Like that. Okay. The article is the news story. Okay. It follows the AP style or other standardized style guide. Ah, um, yeah, I don't know if that makes something more credible. You follow a style guide? Eh, maybe. It answers the question, who, what, when, where, why, how? Yeah. I mean, I would say that's that's pretty important. Like I said, like I, I tend to prefer hard leads, where it just says the Intel, you know, a whatever graphics card is coming out. It'll be available next week. Here's the price. Here are the benchmarks. Like I, that's what I actually look for in stories. So yeah, I, I guess I, I I could say that makes it more credible. Um, stories and advertisement or sponsored content. Yeah, I do not trust <laughs> anything labeled advertisement or sponsored content. Like if we go onto Google. Um, and search for um, herbal supplements. Our society is just cherry picking. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. Like, you, so, so if you want to be a critical thinker, you have to get people who have cherry picked both sides of the issue, or if there's multiple opinions, three sides, four sides of an issue, and then you end up with the facts that you actually that you actually need to make the. Uh, um, the right determination. So, oh, do I have ad blocker on? The one time I actually want to see ads. Dang it. Can somebody pull up a, uh, like a, a sponsored content for like alternative medicine of some sort? This site's pretty terrible. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, live well. Uh, cholesterol. Yeah, all the advertisements are getting hidden. That's, uh, an ad blocker I'm trying to make a point here anyhow yeah anything anything that's uh, an advertisement or sponsored content you absolutely should not trust those things are the absolute worst garbage uh, it's the duality of ad blocker yeah I guess I could disable it but you know nah <laughs> I can do that okay title domain the title is descriptive of the content of the article yeah that's what I was just talking about like a woman discovers thing in her backyard and you know, that's clickbait, right? What? You know, you click on it, and it turns out she discovered a chair. <laughs> Where did the chair come from? Nobody knows. Right? And so I, I have sort of a psychic allergy to clickbait titles. I just don't click on them. Because um, that encourages that behavior. You know, 
Uh, just give me the title, and if I want to learn more about the Airbnb CEO, like I could tell from that title that the Airbnb CEO is like going to do work from home probably permanently, right? Uh, where was that? Right? So we got a couple quotes from him, and you could tell what the thing's going to be about. And if you want to learn more about him ranting about, you know, work from home, you know, you can click on it. When promoted on social media, the title accurately reflects the content of the linked article. Yeah. And uh, the title of the story is sensationalized, like fact sheet. And uh, uh, Biden and Harris have reduced uh, reduced the cost of internet uh, when it's actually they've received promises for reduction, which may or may not actually happen, and may or may not happen to the extent that it's thirty bucks off and might not happen at all because ISPs will just always increase their speeds over time anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, URL contains WordPress or Blogger. Yeah, anytime you see something like that or, you know, there are websites like BuzzFeed and things like that that are absolutely garbage. You can just skip. Uh, yellow journalism. Yeah, I mean, yellow journalism has been going on for, you know, ever. Right? Like, there's not like there's some golden era. Like, when Edward Morrow, you know, would report the news, he would tell the truth and people would listen to it. Like, oh, come on. Like, like you know, the American media has always been, you know, sort of, sort of terrible. Not like super terrible, but like medium, rare, terrible. I don't know. <laughs> um,. Yeah, fake. Uh, yeah, look at the website names, I guess. See if they're like it's just a fake website. Um, evidence acknowledges what information is unknown or unclear. Uh, yeah, it's a press release we read definitely didn't do that. Um, they were trying to obfuscate it, right? Um, yeah, so they were they were definitely hiding the fact that you know this could mean absolutely nothing, right? They present it as a very strong claim in the headline, and then as you kind of read through it, you're like, oh, this could mean absolutely nothing as you go through it. Uh, evidence provided is verified. Yeah, I mean, they had, like, names of ISPs that have agreed to sign up for the thing, right? Uh, regularly updates the story. Uh, that's not really that important. Um, usually you'll release a, news, a, a new news article, you know, like updating a story. Yeah. But yeah, uh, indirect, like, I've yeah, somebody familiar with Trump's, what was it during, during, during the Trump presidency, it was like, somebody familiar with the way that Trump's mind worked has reported that, which I, I, I would just die laughing every time I read, like, the Washington Post. What's your source for your news article? Somebody familiar, not somebody familiar, not Trump, not somebody close to Trump, not somebody familiar with Trump. Somebody who's familiar with the way that Trump's mind works as the source. And I, I would just like be like, oh my gosh, you know, this, like this is what journalism has come to these days. Yeah. Somebody familiar with how his mind works. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the evidence not verified or corroborated. Yeah, that's that's definitely something to look out for. So whenever you read a news story, it, especially if it comes from like hearsay, like somebody heard somebody say something. You should, you should put, like, a question mark on that, like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. And not verified or corroborated, um, yeah, a, a good example of this would be, like, the ghost of Kiev, who, um, you know, that was the fighter pilot that uh, was apparently shooting down all these Russians, and, you know, people had these video footages of the ghost of Kiev that were from a video game, and, like, you know, who knows, right? Like the the the, Rus the, the the Russians said it's a myth, and the Ukrainians said, "No, nope, the ghost is real." And they just announced the ghost died like a week ago. So I have, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah, D did he? I don't know. Like the people on Snake Island were supposed to be dead, right? Like there was a Russian warship that showed up in an island off the coast of Ukraine, and was like surrender, and they're like hell no, and then they killed them all, and then they turned up alive. And so like, I don't know, you know, like. You know, if, if you've been following the Ukraine conflict, like, it's a great example in, like, how hard it is to find out true things, right? Because everything that we're getting here in Fresno is at quite a remove from Ukraine, right? 
Now, I know a couple of Ukrainian people, and they have their sources of information from people in the country, so I kind of listen to them a little more, right? Because, like, um, their family is not... Uh, they're not on the front lines or, like, inland, but, like, their town's been hit a few times by Russian, you know, shelling or missiles or something. But, like, the news stories are just, like, all over the place, and they'll come out with something, and then it'll be contradicted a day later. It's very hard to actually figure out what's going on. Uh, earlier in the in the semester, prior to war breaking out, you know, we talked about the fog of war and how confusing everything is in wartime. And now, you know, we've got a war going on in Russia and Ukraine. And if you're trying to follow the facts on the ground there, it's very hard. It's actually very difficult. So, um, so they have high ranking max out soldiers with top notch gear, everything, taking photos, helping civilians get food and walking old lady. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting though. Like, just from a media studies perspective. Like, it's just really interesting to see how this conflict's going. Because we're used to just having full access to everything because of the internet, right? Like, just, you know, primary footage in our face. And uh, we're, we're getting a real fog of war effect here. Uh, one sided biased evidence is purposely provided to prove or argue against a particular viewpoint. Again, um, yeah, sometimes, like, you know, if you're dealing with Fox and CNN, Fox is going to present the right-wing point of view. CNN is going to present the left-wing point of view. MSNBC is going to present the left-wing point of view. Like, you just have to just, like, kind of accept that and understand it, right? And they're going to have... They're going to cherry-pick a set of facts, and then Fox is going to cherry-pick a set of facts. And you kind of have to look at both of those, and then also look at independent media. And, oh, they have other facts. You collect all those, and then after you've kind of collected all the facts, you yourself can actually make an independent determination of what's real, what's, what's not real. Or when it comes to, like, philosophies, like, you know, does this philosophy, you know, make sense? Does, you know, like the, um, you know, I've been talking about, like, left-wing and right-wing, Democrat versus Republican a lot this semester. I, I, I'm usually a little bit better about it because there's more than just two sides, right? Like, in America, there's more than two political parties, right? Which is a fact that tends to get erased, right? Um, the Libertarian Party is the largest third party in America, but there's also the Green Party and... Um, the Constitutional Party and the American Freedom Party. Like, there's a lot of little third parties. And uh, there's a lot of uh, socialists in, in America as well. And they will have their set of facts. And the Libertarians will have their set of facts about, you know, how the government has failed, you know. Like, like when it comes to broadband, you know, the government has pumped billions of dollars into telecom companies so that everybody has cheap high-speed internet and what happens is the telecom companies take it and go like, thank you, you know. And and sometimes they take it and just don't do anything with it. And there's no accountability. They don't have to give the money back. They just take it and say thank you. Sometimes they provide low-speed internet. They call high-speed internet. Like 500K a second is not high-speed internet, right? But they'll provide that to people. Like, there you go. You got high-speed internet, you know, and things like that. Like I said, I could rant on that subject. And you wouldn't know about that because the Republicans and the Democrats both support uh, the Rust bill and, and these other uh, IT bills to provide especially rural um, people with high-speed internet. And libertarians are like, look, this is a giant money sink. You know, we're talking like, you know, invasion of Afghanistan, levels of money that has been just poured into um, a, a black hole without any effect that anyone could tell. So, uh, we need the Green Party to get to number two so you can get RGB for our political parties. <laughs> the red's the green, blue. Yeah, libertarians are yellow, which is kind of weird to me but um yeah so basically yeah it's not it's not credible but you just kind of have to balance it you know uh publishers and journalists uh the parent organizations are listed in about us that's important because we talked a few times ago about how media companies are oftentimes owned by like disney you know things like that and they're not going to critical they're not going to be critical of disney if they're abc news right uh, the acknowledge conflicts of interest. That's also pretty important. Um, and, and TV news is actually pretty good about that. Like they'll they'll say, just so you know, uh, our company owns so and so. You know, they're doing this around. Um, no information on the publisher, writers, authors are known for fictitious or satirical websites. Yeah, that's that's all good stuff to look out for. The journalists follow a code of ethics. You have no idea if they follow a code of ethics. My lord, like how do you know if they follow a code of ethics? You know, you, you see some, you know, article on New York Times. Like, how do you know if they follow? Like, that's that's kind of a ridiculous bullet point here. 
they're trained professionals. It's always a good idea to research the credentials and backgrounds of affiliated writers. That's that's maybe a step too far for me. Like, you know, if I'm reading a news article, usually I can tell just by the way that it's constructed. Like, is it trying to be fair or is it an opinion piece? Like, you can usually tease that out pretty quickly. And so it doesn't really matter, you know, if they're, what their background is. But if you're curious, you know, like, uh, uh, Max Boot Wapo, uh, you can, you can, like, dig into the backgrounds of, like, different, you know, article writers. Like, you know, um, he was criticizing Elon's takeover of Twitter, right? And so you can click on his background and then find out, okay, he was educated at Berkeley, history, history, uh, one of the world's leading authorities on armed conflict. He has been called that. He is senior fellow. Da, 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 da. What a nice biography. Okay. Um, so there's some books. And does it say that he follows the journalism code of ethics? No. So how are you supposed to know that? I don't know. That's kind of a ridiculous... It's kind of a ridiculous bullet point there. Is he a trained professional? I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, he's, he's got an academic background, I guess. Um, no background in journalism that I can see. Um, but he's been involved in journalism for quite a while, so, yeah. I guess that makes you a trained professional. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know if you technically need a journalism degree. But yeah, you can dig into it. And it, especially, like, if you're... Um, th this doesn't actually help very much, but if you look at similar articles they write, then you can kind of tell... Um, yeah, okay, here. The corrosion of conservatism. Why I left the right. You know, so you can tell, okay, this guy's left-wing, right? You can, you can oftentimes figure out their political bias from other articles they've written. Okay. Sources. They're evaluated against... I'm vain. Independent, multiple, verified, authoritative, and named sources. Right. Whereas the Washington Post would use someone familiar with the way that Trump's brain works. <laughs> um, yeah, this is actually really important. So when, when you, whenever you read a story, like, who's this, what's the source of it? And we, we, we dug into this a little bit with, like, the science journalism, right? Because a lot of times the science journalism isn't the source for the story, they're citing some paper. And then you click on the paper and you find out the paper says something completely different, right? And so, um, for me, like primary sources are, are the gold standard, right? What is the source of information? Like with the ghost of Kiev, how do, like what's the source that the ghost exists? What's the source the ghost dies? I have no idea, you know? So my, my whole take on that thing is like, eh, I don't know, you know? like. Might just be a video game character. Who knows? You know? Um, so, uh, unreliable sources are self-interested or biased. Again, you know, like, every time you interview a politician, like, they're going to be speaking the point of view of their party, right? Uh, it doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. You just need to kind of keep that in mind, right? Um, singular, there's only one source. Yeah, that that's oftentimes a tip-off. Uh, but, you know, sometimes there is only one source for something. You know, somebody's murdered and there's one witness, and then the witness tells their story. And, yeah. um, offer assertions. Yeah, bro, trust me. You know, Ipsy Dixit. We talked about that earlier in the semester. Uh, offer beliefs, opinions without any evidence. That's, that's something you definitely have to watch out for, where people will just give their opinion and not cite anything, not give any evidence to say why their opinion's right. Well, I definitely know that... Okay. I was there. Trust me, bro. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Sure. We'll trust you. Um, somebody repeating here say, I heard a rumor. Oh, I hate those. Unnamed sources. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, evidence presented in context. Use quotes uh, and paraphrasing. The sources attributed. You can confirm quotes elsewhere. Yeah, this is, this is one of the most important things. It's like, when I, whenever I'm trying to figure out the truth of something, and there's opposing claims, you know, Republicans claim this, Democrats claim this, Socialists claim this, Libertarians claim this. It's like, I try to find out where they agree and where the claims disagree. Okay, and if the claims disagree, what are the sources for the disagreements of those claims? You know, and sometimes, like, the sources can be 
independent, multiple, verified, and disagree. Right? Like, if you're talking about, like, the future, like, nobody knows what the future is going to hold. Right? So if you're going to say, like, uh, when Republicans dropped the tax rate a few years back, right, there were all these, uh, you know, professors and economists and things like that that weighed in saying this is what will happen if the Republican tax cut goes through. And the Democrat sources were saying it's going to run up the deficit and lower tax revenue. The Republican sources were saying it would raise tax revenue even though the rates were lower because money would flow back from uh, overseas because America had the highest tax rate in the OECD. And so we drive money overseas by having the high tax rate. And so that's fine. You know, that's part of, you know, speculation about the future is that you can actually have people in good faith disagree with each other and have different predictions. And so the best you can do is just read the opinions both sides have and be like, okay, you know, you know, do your best. But a lot of times when there's conflicting claims, like what happened in the past, you will have a set of claims and a set of claims and you have to dig down and find where they agree and kind of throw those away and find the actual point of contention. Did so-and-so order the attack on that or not, you know? And and then what's the source of that claim? And you look at it and, and that will tell you who's right, you know? And so that's basically what it what it comes down to. Is like, you know, when, when there's a disagreement on a claim, you have to look at both sources and really dig into it and find out what the actual truth is. And then you can find out which side is right. And sometimes, spoiler alert, your side is wrong, you know? Um, it, it is possible for your side to be wrong. It does happen. And so, you know, you, as a critical thinker, you have to be open to the truth, you know? Like, you have to look at the truth and follow it where it will, you know? And, uh, you know, it might not make you popular on social media, which is why I typically avoid all political stuff on social media. It's just not worth arguing with people, you know? Um, I just post photos of, you know, my trips and things like that, just as a way of like keeping up with everybody, you know, so they know what I'm doing and I know what they're doing, but you know, sure you can walk them through, you know, that whole process, but it's usually not worth it. Um, aesthetics is the website professional in appearance. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like the Washington post certainly looks uh, professional and layout, but, you know, like I said, during the Trump administration, they, they just went off the deep end as far as the sources go. Like, it, it was just it was just pretty bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, to be fair, though, like, if a website looks like it's a tabloid, it probably is, right? Um, websites badly designed, cluttered with text or heavy-handed photoshopping, title and headline are all caps. That, I don't know. Like, headlines in all caps is kind of a long-standing tradition, you know? It seems like they're going after Drudge Report, where it's just all, it's all text, right? All, te all caps, do not trust Drudge Report. <laughs> it's cluttered with text. Uh, so, oh, there's a new Avatar movie. Cool. Interesting. Um, NASA to send nudes to space. Really? <laughs> that, <laughs> speaking of clickbait, all right. Uh, I mean, they... They told us what they're going to do, right? They want... Okay, so here the title is To Send Nudes to Space. Here it's Wants To. Do you see the difference? To means they're going to do it. You click on it, it becomes Wants To. And, and this is something that I've done over and over again in this class in years past where you click, and as you follow the source back to the source material, it becomes like it's a proposal to. Somebody had an idea to, you know. And then by the time it gets filtered by five levels of telegraph, then it becomes, they're going to send nudes into space to attract aliens. Okay, cool. Sure. <laughs> Imagine flying through space, like, like <laughs> unsolicited. <laughs> like, like, wait, the aliens are like, we don't want to see this. Like, what, what, why are you sending it out of space? Uh, you imagine, they're like... Why? Why are you doing this to us? Uh, yeah. Apropos to what we're talking about here, does America really want real news on cable? The Hill. All right. So, is this a professional-looking website? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Opinion contributor. Okay. So this is an opinion piece. Does America really want real news on cable? Um, 
There's Ben Ridge's Law of Headlines, which is the answer is no. Anytime, anytime a headline asks a question, the answer is always no. Uh, CNN has a problem. It wants to do real news on cable television. Does it, though? Does it? The goal was made clear again last week in a memo issued on his first official day at head of CNN. Oh, we got another one. Okay, cool. Uh, Chris Lick told his staff, too many people have lost trust in news media. Absolutely true. The best way to recover trust, he wrote, is educating viewers and readers with straightforward facts and insightful commentary while being respectful of differing viewpoints. That's a game changer for CNN. Yeah, good luck with that. Well, you know, if he's serious about it, like, I, w I would celebrate that because, it, you know, it's very much biased right now, you know. Uh, here's the challenge. Real news is for the curious. At its best, television news is delivered by people and for people who don't believe they already know everything. But cable news today is dominated by opinionated anchors, reporters, and viewers who are the opposite of curious. Questions posed in these shows are rarely genuine. The rhetoric, the host, and all the answers, and so do the people watching. Nobody wants to encounter different viewpoints. Okay, so this is an opinion piece, right? Where it's sort of a sarcastic uh, take on the state of media right now. Um, anyway, so that's uh, that's kind of the uh, the upshot. So. Whenever somebody shares something on, on social media, whenever you read a news story, whenever, um, or they don't even share something, they just say, hey, did you hear, you know, there should always be a question mark, right? Like, uh, is that true? You know, where's the primary source? Where's the, you know, where's the evidence for it? And if there is a primary source, then you kind of have to repeat the process. Like, is the primary source credible? You know, is this coming from the national Association of Scholars? Is it coming from the NIH? Is it coming from the World Health Organization? Which themselves have been accused of bias, right? Like, uh, the WHO didn't exactly cover itself in glory with the coronavirus um, pandemic, but at the same time, it's not somebody in their basement saying, they're coming to kill us all, you know, they're bat bacteria. You know, <laughs> you know like, the WHO is a World Health Organization. The NIH is the National Institutes of Health. They're a credible organization which despite you know whatever criticisms a lot of which might be valid um you know they are official organizations and should be treated probably with a little bit more um attention than somebody drunk at the bar next to you so uh yeah so anyhow that that's basically that my my take on it is always always dig down um a friend of mine you know posted a thing saying that uh, meritocracy is a myth, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you know, because I've always thought that meritocracy, you know, there are cases, you know, where, uh, do you guys know what meritocracy is, like, people who are more um, skilled and work harder uh, do better in American society, right? So meritocracy is the notion that you work hard, you're smart, you uh, you work smart and hard, and you'll, you'll be successful in America, right? Like, that's... You know, not necessarily you're going to be Elon Musk, you know, because there's only so many, you know, CEO positions at large companies. But, um, you know, it's it's basically the American dream, right? Which is the notion that you you put in your time, you, you go to college, you get educated, and you work hard, and, you know, you, and you'll make money. You'll, you'll make enough money at least to have a house and, you know, kids and, and things like that. And uh, so a friend of mine posted an article saying meritocracy is a myth. Not that... Not that it was bad, not that um, they disagree with that way of structuring society, but that it, it was a myth that like America America does not operate on a meritocracy right now. And I thought that was very interesting because it's like, you know, if you look at like social mobility and things like that, America has a fairly socially mobile society, even though some people will, will certainly dispute that. And so um, I was arguing with him about it. I'm like, all right, what's the source of your of your thing? And he, he linked me a doctoral dissertation. And so I was at an airport at the time. So on the, I downloaded the whole PDF and on the plane ride back to Fresno, I read this entire like two or 300 page dissertation on meritocracy being a myth. And I took notes on my, on my cell phone, you know, and basically, uh, when I arrived, I'm like, all right, so, you know, basically they don't have any real evidence for it. You know, like they, it, it's more of a philosophical position that like, you know, they cherry pick sometimes where like, the CEO hires his kid to take over this, like, yeah, who cares? You know, like, yeah, sure, that'll happen. But, you know, as far as, like, the general case goes, you know, the article is like, well, if, you, if, you, if you're born rich in the country, you're more likely to be rich. Yeah, yeah, we, we know that. 
that's not the question being, you know, because you're going to be handed money by your parents. You know, that's not, that's not the question of, like, if meritocracy exists. Meritocracy means you're more likely to succeed if you do well and are competent, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> thanks, Jim. But, you know, and, and so, you know, I, it, and it kind of annoyed me because my, my friend, you know, posted this thing as if it was, it's in a doctoral dissertation. It must be true. And, and I, it sort of forced me to go through and, and find, there's only probably five primary sources in that whole thing, you know, that, that actually backed up the point. And, you know, basically there wasn't anything there. It was more of just a opinion piece that was hidden in two or 300 pages of technical jargon. So, yeah, uh, that's, you know, am I suggesting you guys do all that? Yeah, actually. <laughs> actually, yeah, I, I am suggesting you do that. If, you're, if your friends make a claim and, and you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, you know, dig into it. You know, it's a good habit of mine to get into. So you, so you believe true things, you don't believe false things. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, we're on a little long, but um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of the thesis statement for this class. Like, primary sources, figure it out. Don't just believe other people. Dig into it yourself. I would stop at page twenty. Yeah, honestly, you probably could have. I probably could have just read the abstract, and then try to find the sources for the claims in the abstract. Um, but as it was, I was on a plane flight across the entire country, so I'm like, I got, no, I got nothing better to do. I'm gonna read this whole thing. All right. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for coming out, and I will see you on Wednesday. Peace.